Hi everybody, Brody from Brody's Garage here. It's episode 46, today is August 27th. Let's go. Okay, so picking up where we left off in episode 45, I was preparing to get the car ready to put on a trailer and take it down to the DMV. Uh, before I loaded it up, there was a couple things I wanted to kind of tidy up on the car. Um, the stainless steel trim around the rear window, for one, and just a little bit of primer touch-up and body work. And my friend Al Nakata came down, and here's how that went. Ooh, okay, so Al dropped by today partly to bring me that trailer so I can take the car to the DMV, but also to help do some final adjustments on the car to make it look a little more presentable. We found that a big part of the adjustment of the front end was adjusting these torsion rods from TCI that go down from the firewall to the frame. Uh, the more you lengthen that bar, the more it stretches the firewall away from the frame, which pulls the fender gap, um, in this case, forward. and that enabled us to really have a lot more adjustment on the bottom and top and with fine tuning that it really lined up our gaps nicely the doors are open right now so you can't really see but you'll see later but we are going to do a little spot primering while we had the doors open we were adjusting um, al came back in and fine tuned some of this rocker panel right here it was really kind of unfinished before so we're just going to dust in a little bit of epoxy primer now so this spot here on the hood this was my doing um, previously we had the car mocked up and the way the fenders were sitting and everything I decided that the gap was too tight here on the hood and I thought that the hood itself was not straight it, it really wasn't it, it kind of tapered at the end but I got my um, what do you call it flapper disc flapper why I never even met her and was going along this edge and I broke through the seam I, I went too far with it so today I have spot welded it back in uh, Al put a little skim coat of putty on there, and we're gonna dust this in with some epoxy primer too. So maybe an extra one here. Yeah, if you look there, it's bowing up for sure quite and a bit on this. It'll top also panel. suck it that way too. This just requires a little bit of filling and contouring. You can see it's tight there in the top and there's a gap on the side. The biggest problems might be down here. This is lifted out. And then around here, it's snug along the bottom, but there's a pretty huge gap there, which might be because the, the butyl tape is so thick, it's pushing out the glass so far that it's tight here on the ends which could be pulling the whole piece of trim away so maybe a thinner piece of butyl tape will allow the glass to settle more um, on the other hand it's a little the glass is sunk down quite a bit on the top side so maybe it needs to be a thicker piece on top and a thinner piece on the bottom but it's kind of in Let's take a little video walk through the whole piece so reproduction trim on a reproduction body with reproduction glass, what could go wrong? I guess it could be worse than that. Here again, a little filler work there, no big deal. But there we go. There is our stainless steel trim, kind of. Well, kids, this is it, the calm before the storm. This is the Noba's last day of being illegitimate. We just uh, did a little cleanup work on it. It's ready to go to the DMV tomorrow. I'm just at the park right by my house. And so uh, had to get it out of the garage just to see it in the natural light. I know it's just primered, but I can't help but be a little bit in love with the car. Well, everybody, it is Monday, August 22nd, and I'm heading down to the DMV with the Nova to try to get a new vehicle identification number, which will then hopefully lead to registration and being able to drive the car legally on the streets. Uh, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit nervous. I, I hope everything goes smoothly. I got my receipts with me. I got all the things ticked off on the checklist and I got it signed off by a certified mechanic. Let's see what happens. 
All right, so I'm in line at the bin inspection uh, lane here, and they've taken my receipts inside. They've asked me a bunch of questions so far, and now I wait. Okay, well, step one is complete. I have a new VIN plate for this car. It is right there, and uh, it's just a decal. It's not a aluminum plate that's riveted on like the original ones, or stainless steel, whatever they are. So, uh, step one complete. I am now at the emissions control lab behind the VIN inspection line. And now they need to look at the car. I don't know if they're gonna take it off the trailer and put it up on a lift or what's gonna happen next, but I'm, I'm waiting. So here we go. All right, I am now heading inside the DMV to um, go to the application for a new title section. While I'm in there, I'm going to look into seeing about getting a mover's permit because I just tried to make an appointment to get the car registered and that earliest slot was September 2nd, so that's just not gonna work, man. I gotta drive the car. So I'm gonna find out about a mover's permit. I'm going to probably call Haggerty back. I'm gonna call a couple of places and get quotes for car insurance. Um, it's a whole other thing. But, um, so we'll see what happens here when I go inside. I've got the VIN plate now. I've got the uh, paperwork. They didn't look, really, they didn't look the car over. They didn't verify the safety stuff, like the wipers and brakes and all that, which is fine. But um, one thing that I didn't do was I had Bruce leave blank the section that said VIN because, well, the car didn't have a VIN. But what they wanted to see was some sort of an identification that he was, in fact, inspecting that car. So a body number. So I could have used the body number from the original sales invoice from Real Deal Steel. Um, they went ahead and signed off on it because they could see that I had ample paperwork and documents about the car so they they kind of took my word for it i guess so that's one little point if you're going to get this done put something down there as a body number reference number anyway i am heading inside now so uh the saga continues here we go okay i was slightly mistaken i am not going to be able to apply for the new title today but i am going to be able to get a mover's permit, hopefully. So I'm waiting on my number to be called. Um, I've tried scheduling my appointments for registration. I got that locked in, but apparently I need to make a different appointment for the uh, title application. So I don't know. Maybe I can sneak that in while I'm doing the registration on the same day, but maybe I have to wait. Anyway, this, this ain't happening this week, but I am gonna get a mover's permit. I am gonna get insurance and I will be able to drive the car. So that's, that's really the goal. So when I got back home from the DMV with the car and the trailer, I got ahead of myself and I got a little bit impatient and antsy. I was on the phone all day long with Haggerty Insurance trying to get a policy ready to go so that as soon as I got my VIN number, I could call them back and instate the policy. I wanted to get the car insured as soon as I could. Every time I called back, I spoke with a different representative and it ended up being about seven or eight times throughout the day that I called back and each time a different person and they'd have to look at my file and go, okay, well, we got this. Now we need this. And they would ask for additional photos of the car. They would uh, ask for me to fill out a form that says, well, I have performance experience in the past with vehicles. And then it was, they wanted a copy of my current insurance on my other cars, which I don't understand why they needed that. And then once they got that, they needed, uh, me to put it in put it in my name as the primary policy holder which my fiance and I are on the same policy and she's the primary it got to be a very frustrating a grueling day and as all this was going on I was trying to get the policy enacted so that I could get it off the trailer and actually go pick up my daughter from school and surprise her well I got ahead of myself and I was on the phone with one hand and un unhitching the car from the trailer with the other and as I was backing it off, I made a little bit of a turn and I did this to my freshly adjusted and installed fender. So now I'm gonna pull the headlight bezel off and see if this can be tapped out or bent or whatever. But as you can see, it caught the fender and pushed this in. It's also buckled right here in the front where it meets the bumper filler panel. So I gotta pull all this stuff off and see how bad it is. Maybe I can fix it. Um, Al is on his way down again to, uh, to help me out today. So, uh, we'll see. Maybe it's not as bad as it looks, but it was a, it was a frustrating day yesterday. 
the, the, the takeaway, the good news is I did get the VIN plate for the car. Uh, I did get a temporary mover's permit so that I can drive the car. I just got to sort out the insurance deal. I may go back to Haggerty and get them what they need. I was just uh, at the end of my ropes yesterday and I actually kind of hung up on them and I was so frustrated. But uh, today's a new day, as, as always. Um, so things that are looking impossible can sometimes have a, a, a new outlook on the next day. So let's, let's get into it and see what happens today. It's a good thing I have friends like Al because look at that. A couple hours later, good as new. Okay, so next up on the agenda, these little brackets here are for the rear anti-sway bar right there. And the problem was my exhaust, which is there, was just ever so gently rubbing against the corner of this bracket uh, that's mounted to a cross member underneath. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld up this center hole here, which I think the hole might have been for a brake line to pass through, I'm not sure. But in any case, I'm gonna weld this up solid, grind it down flat, and then I'm gonna shave off this corner here so to keep it kind of strong, you know, but uh, give it some clearance. So let's get on with it. All right, well, there's my finished product there. I basically just welded that hole up, grounded down flush, and cut this off at an angle there. So hopefully that clears. Let's get it back in and see. Okay, well, that worked. Um, as you can see back there, the bracket that holds up the sway bar is now clearanced. I got about another half inch clearance gained here between my tailpipe and it. This is with the car at ride height, so the suspension is loaded. Um, the tailpipe has about, I don't know, an inch, inch and a half of clearance or travel for the rear end to go up and down. Not a lot, but it's a pretty stiff suspension and a light car. I don't think it's going to go much more than that. And if it does, well, it's going to bottom out. <laughs> okay, so I am pulling an all-nighter here. Um, just finished the brakes. Um, completely redid all of the hard lines in stainless steel. Wasn't happy with my first job in copper nickel. Um, went all stainless, all the new fittings, um, put new brake lines up here, brake hoses actually, braided lines that go down from the proportioning valve. Um, and probably if you total them all up between all the T's and the N's and everything, probably like 40 fittings, potential leaks, and probably about 12 of them leaked. So spent quite a bit of time chasing down leaks, tightening things up. I had to redo one of the lines in the back. Apparently one of my double flares didn't, didn't, didn't take the right way. Um, got it sealed up, brakes bled. Um, I just got this piece back from my friend Andrew, who actually lives just around the corner here. But as it turns out, Andrew is a race car builder and fabricator, and he just, uh, he, pedaled in one day on his bicycle and came up to check out my build here because I'm out here every day. And he introduced himself and kind of told me some of his background and I was kind of like, well, this guy knows what he's talking about. I finally went down to his shop today to see if I could con him into welding this up for me while I was working on brakes because I had to end up cutting this whole thing off the passenger side and redoing it. The, uh, the bellow there, the flex pipe, was rubbing up against the gas strut for the hood hinge and just a, completely out of alignment. Um, not sure how it got so messed up. We had it pretty well tacked up when we were at Chapo's shop, but something happened along the way. And by the time it got all welded, it was just uh, all cockeyed. So I decided to chop it up, redo it. I tacked it up and then I took it to him today and dropped it off and he just brought this back to me about an hour ago. So we're talking like 9 p.m. He brought it back to me. And before I put it back on, I just want to show off some of this guy's weld, man. Look at this work that he did here. Very, very clean, very tidy welds. And uh, thank you again, Andrew, for doing that for me. Now I'm going to see if I can get this all back on the car, get the fender back on. And my goal is to get up at 6 a.m., roll the car out, give it a little wipe down, pick up my daughter, and take it to the little car show in Henderson for the first time ever. So I've been busting my tail to get this ready for this Saturday. It's just a local show and shine. It's not like I'm going to win an award or anything like that. 
but um, I've been going down there as a spectator now for months, and uh, this is my first opportunity to take the car down and show it off a little bit. So I'm going to pull an all-nighter here and uh, see if I can get it together. We'll see what happens here. It's August 27th. I'm here with my daughter, Brina. Hi. Hello. And uh, we're at the Henderson Cars and Coffee. I brought the Nova out for the first time ever. Finally. It's a little scary. It's a rattle trap. There's no interior. It's just like a big rattling, vibrating metal can going down the road, but it'll only get better. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to Celebrity Cars and Coffee. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. Lots of friends in the parking lot today. It is. Okay, so later in the day, um, I got home from the car show, uh, took a bunch of notes because it was the first time I really got to take the car out on the open road and bring it up to even get it into fourth gear. I uh, made a pretty good list of things that were uh, noticeably wrong. Uh, first of all, the car was running rough. I could tell right away that it was misfiring. My first thought was, uh, did it foul a plug or something like that? wasn't until I got it back home, popped the hood, looked down in there, and I realized the number one plug wire was laying completely off. I think I had pulled all the plug wires off one at a time because I went back and retorqued down the, uh, the header or the manifold bolts and required pulling the boots out of the way. And I guess I must not have got that one back on. So it was the reason and plugged it back in. Problem solved, the, uh, the engine's running much smoother. The car is a tin can, it's got no sound deadener, there's no sealant, there's no carpet, there's no padding, there's nothing but metal in there. So any noises that it already has are, are amplified. It's just a rattling mess going down the road. Um, we are here at Team Ford right now, and my buddy Bruce Daniel is over there balancing the wheels on the car for the first time. These wheels have never been balanced. If you recall, when I first got them, I took them down to miscount tire and they didn't have the correct procedure to mount them so hence they couldn't get them balanced here i'm going to go show you what we're doing over here but it uses a lug centric method to mount it so that's the key to getting these wheels balanced is that lug centric adapter there right yep this is bruce daniel my buddy here he's helping me out with the alignment wheel balancing brakes all kinds of shit thank you bruce so it looks like we've got a bent rim here. This is the passenger side front. And the driver's side front seemed to go just fine, but this one has got a noticeable wobble to it. And we're using the lug-centric mounting hub. If you look here. That wheel is wobbling. Okay, so back to the driver's side again. No wobble. <laughs> so this is the first oil change, brake-in oil, 30 weight. And uh, a little light on there, yeah. You can see some little metallic, fine metallic particles swimming around in there. I don't know how normal that is, but obviously bearings have to wear in, rings and all that. Just 
expect to see some, but there's no big chunks, no no pieces of anything. We're gonna crack that oil filter open a little bit too and see there's a little gray in there, fine medical metal particles. All right. All right, so one of the major boo-boos that we caught here was yesterday when I redid all my brake lines and hoses, I attached that hose from the proportioning valve down to this caliper here. And with it sitting on the ground, it looked fine, but as soon as the suspension drops or travels or the wheel turns, that line is way too tight right there. So that's gonna have to be replaced with a longer hose. Live and learn. Okay, so all in all, a really good day. Um, the car left the garage legally insured and everything and i drove it all the way across town to the uh, celebrity cars and coffee event with my daughter had a great time it's been a long time since i've had a car that turns heads like this and wants people it makes people want to gather around it and check it out so it was uh rewarding to see all of the hard work kind of pay off today <laughs> Uh, for the first time and you know I know that I'll get hopefully years of enjoyment out of this car and it'll it'll make a lot of people happy as well so that was good um, after I left there I made the drive back and this afternoon proceeded up to team Ford to see Bruce and get the work done on the front end we didn't get as far as as we had hoped um, and there's some discouraging news with the wheels but nonetheless at least I, I have some some solutions to look forward to. I'm going to contact Weld Wheels and see what they uh, think about it and if they have a suggestion or a solution how I can get some wheels that aren't bent. That being said, while I'm very happy with the progress and it was a huge milestone today to check off to get the car out in public and get that appreciation, it's a long, long way to go. And until I was able to drive it on the freeway, I would never have really gotten to experience some of the problematic things that are still existing within the car. First and foremost, it's just a huge, bouncy, vibrating, rattling mess. Uh, and I say that with love for the car because, um, you know, it's come a long way. But the truth is, it's a long way from being a comfortable get in, turn on the AC, you know, and just enjoy the car. It's, it's, a, it's, it's just kind of a, well, it's just a hot mess right now. <laughs> Um, that being said, I know there's a lot of things that need to be done before it gets there. It's, it's just a completely bare metal car. There's no seam sealer in it. There's no sound deadener. There are still things that are vibrating in the exhaust and rattling. The rear axle sounds like it's howling. The transmission may have some issues as well. The engine may have a vibration issue, or it might just be running rough because of something like I don't know, maybe the valve train, maybe the rocker arms are not adjusted properly and I may need to pull the valve covers off and go through that another time and make sure that my preload is set correctly. These are just ideas off the top of my head. I haven't pulled the spark plugs to see if they're fouling. Um, but yeah, just from, from one end to the other, um, I know that I have a lot of issues to resolve and I, and I know that I will get there, but it's just going to take time and I'm going to have to go through all the process of elimination to get there. So that being said, today was a good day. It was a step forward and um, I have a lot to do, a lot to do. Even though it looks like a running, functioning car and it is, um, we got a long, long journey ahead of us. Tune into the next episode and we'll see where we get. Take care.